Three Days of Frost by R.D. Wingfield. Starring Leslie Sands as Detective Inspector Frost with Steve Hodson as Detective Constable Barnard. Three Days of Frost. Uh, prepare him for immediate surgery, nurse. Yes, Doctor. Oh, and, and warn the others. Uh, are you Mr. Barnard? Detective Constable Barnard. How is he? Well, he's got a bullet in his brain. How do you expect him to be? Oh, well, I'm sorry. But I've been working all night. He, he really needs a specialist. But it, it's two o'clock Christmas morning. I can't even scrape together a full operating team. Now, um, are there any relatives? I don't know. Oh. I don't think so. I've only known him a few days, you see. Oh. Well, he's got very little chance. You realise that, don't you? I mean, we'll do our best, but uh, well, it, it couldn't have happened at a worse time. But that was typical of you, Detective Inspector Jack Frost, wasn't it? Typical. Getting yourself shot on Christmas Day a second-best surgeon and half the theatre staff missing. But why the hell did I worry? We were almost total strangers. When I stepped off the London train at Denton Station on that Sunday night before Christmas, I didn't even know you existed. The promised police car was waiting to take me to my digs. Doors open, engine running, impatient to get away. Detective Constable Clive Barnard. That's right. Get in quick as you can. I'm PC Jordan. That's PC Sims. Hello there. We've got to make a detour. A woman's phoned the station. Her eight-year-old kid hasn't returned from Sunday school. That's the sort of crime we get in, Denton, Mr. Barnard. None of your big London bullion robberies. How long have you been in CID? Three months. Oh, three old months, eh? And now you come down from London to show us how it's done. <laughs> Left here. I know, I know. I'm not down here to show anyone anything. I'm here to learn. It's a three-month exchange scheme of training, I've thought of. Oh, uh... Other forces have sent people to London. What the hell? We'd just missed hitting a mud-splattered car which shot right across our path. The driver, a shabbily dressed individual in his mid-forties, gave a careless wave of apology as he disappeared into the darkness. A silly damn fool. He'll get himself killed one of these days. Who is he? One of your new colleagues, young Barnard. That was Detective Inspector Jack Frost. What? Him? He looks like an old tramp. No, he's not the world's snappiest dresser. Well, thank goodness I'm not working with him. I'm with uh, Detective Inspector Cull. Ah, this is Vicarage Terrace. What number? 29. Uh, there. That must be it. Yeah. We stopped outside a detached house where a young teenage girl waved frantically to flag us down. I imagined her to be the missing child's sister. Mrs. Uphill? Yes. Mrs. Uphill? This kid? But in the light, I could see she was about 24 years old and worried sick. Have you found her? Give us a chance, Mrs. Uphill. We've only just got your message. Yes. Yes, of course. It didn't take them long to get the details... Her eight-year-old daughter, Tracy, had attended the Sunday school at the end of the road. The Sunday school finished at 4.30. It was now a little after seven, and the child still hadn't returned home. Try not to worry, Mrs. Uphill. She's probably just wandered off somewhere. Kids do. I suppose so. Stay by your phone. We'll ring you as soon as we have some news. And you'll ring us if she turns up in the meantime. Yes, of course. Good. We'll show ourselves out. Come on, Barnard. Here, Mike, this Sunday school. Wasn't it the one where we had those complaints about the man trying to lure kids into his car? Yes, but that was months ago. Still, mention it when you radio the kid's description through to control. Mm. And tell them we are now taking our supercargo to his digs. <laughs> it's tomorrow you report in, isn't it, Barnard? Where's the meeting, Sergeant? Uh, down that corridor, a second door on your left, sir. Denton Police. Right. I'll tell him. Uh, yes, sir? I'm not a sir, Sergeant. I'm Detective Constable Barnard. Oh, yes. The whiz kid from London. I was told to report to Detective Inspector Cull at eight o'clock. Were you? Well, it's now five past. Uh, the meeting, Sergeant? Uh, down the corridor, second door on your left. 
Anyway, Barnard, Inspector Cowell won't be able to see you for a while. We've got a bit of a panic on. And, um, let me give you a little tip. We don't go in for flashy gear down here. I'm sorry. I don't know what you mean. That suit. Change it. I see nothing wrong with it, Sergeant. Don't be told, then. Look out, here's the divisional commander. Good morning, Sergeant Wells. Good morning, sir. Everyone here for the meeting? As far as I know, sir. Good. Uh, by the way, sir, this is Detective Constable Barnard. Barnard. Welcome to Denton. Thank you, sir. I'm Superintendent Mullet, the divisional commander. Did you have a good trip? Digs all right? Yes, thank you, sir. You're waiting for Inspector Carl, aren't you? I tell you what, come along with me and sit in on this briefing meeting. You'll find it informative. We've got this problem with a missing girl. There's a seat there you can have, Barnard. Thank you, sir. No sign of Inspector Frost. He doesn't seem to be honouring us with his presence. Was he told? Oh, yes, sir, he was told. Hmm, typical. Your attention, please. <coughs> Firstly, thank you all for coming. This child has now been missing for over 16 hours. 16 hours of sub-zero temperature. There's snow on the way. So if we're going to find her alive, we've got to be speedy and we've got to be thorough. For that reason, I have put Detective Inspector Cull in charge of this operation. And as he's in charge, it behoves me to shut up and let him take over. <laughs> when you're ready. Thank you. Now, Tracy Uphill, eight years old, fair hair, wearing a thick blue coat and a woolen scarf. Good. Any questions? <coughs> uh, right, uh, yes, uh, Constable Stringer. I was wondering if it might not be a good idea to check on known child molesters, sir. Oh, that's an excellent suggestion, Stringer. So you won't be surprised to learn that it occurred to your superiors over 12 hours ago. A separate team is now out checking on every known and suspected sexual offender in the division. But a good point, Constable. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Very good point. All right, now, anything else? Right then, off you go, and good luck. Uh, <coughs> Inspector. Uh, yes, sir? What about the, uh, the new chap, uh, Barnard? Well, I, I can't cope with him in the search party as well as all my other work. Sir. But there's no one else. There's Frost. Frost? I, I, I couldn't. I, I, I couldn't possibly. Uh, only until we find the girl. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but it's got to be. Now, if you'll excuse me, sir. Oh, all right. Uh, Barnard. Yes, sir. Um, slight change of plan. Uh, by the way, I, I suppose the rest of your luggage hasn't arrived yet. My luggage, sir? I mean with your proper suit. Oh. Uh, yes, sir. It's on the way. Excellent. Right. Uh, well, then, instead of Inspector Cull, you'll be working under Detective Inspector Frost. Frost, sir? Yes. He uh, wasn't at the meeting. But he's a very experienced officer, very experienced. But the thing is, Barnard, and I am taking you into my confidence here, you'll, uh, you'll have to make allowances for him. Uh, allowances, sir? Yes. He's a very experienced, as I've said, but he, he had a personal tragedy last year, his wife. Very sad, inoperable, absolutely nothing they could do. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. You took it badly, I'm afraid. You, you can't expect these tragedies not to leave their mark, so we, we make allowances. I see, sir. Good, I knew you would understand. Now, let's go down to Inspector Frost's office and try and find out where he's got to. Don't you knock when you come into someone's office. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Oh, God, the briefing meeting. Yes, Frost. The briefing meeting. Would you mind waiting outside for a moment, Barnard? Sir. So, where were you? I'm sorry, Super. I, uh, I forgot. Forgot? Don't you keep a desk, diary? There's one here somewhere. This office is a disgrace. It's a, it's a pigsty, an absolute pigsty. Unemptied ashtrays, paper everywhere. And that should have gone off weeks ago. And there's that file. What I asked you for it, you said you didn't have it. Oh, I've, uh, I've only just found it. I was going to bring it in to you. It, it was under these papers. How could anyone possibly work in a mess like this? Oh, get it tidied up, Frost, please. While we're on distasteful subjects, your, oh, your standard of dress. 
You look as if you're wearing your gardening clothes. Your trousers want pressing, and I'm sure those shoes haven't seen a blacking brush for months. We can't all be tailors, dummies. Sir. Don't be impertinent, Frost. Now, listen. I'm putting this new man, Detective Constable Barnard, under your care. Only for a couple of days, until Inspector Cull can take over. Watch your tongue. Mind what you say to him, especially when referring to superior officers. And no bending of the rules. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly, sir. Good. Come in, Barnard. Inspector Frost, this is Detective Constable Barnard. Sir. God almighty. Mm, his proper suit is coming down with the rest of his luggage. Oh, I see. Well, I'll leave you to it. Remember what I said, Inspector. Oh, yes, sir. Well, come in, son. Sit down. Thank you. If you clear those files away, you might find there's a chair underneath. How much do they charge for suits like that? Fifty-seven pounds, sir. Blimey. A proper shop, was it? Yes, sir. A bit of gratuitous advice from an old hand, son. Never wear anything on duty. You wouldn't be happy letting a drunk be sick all over. Come in. Ah, Inspector Cole. Oh, hello, Jack. Oh, this place is a mess. Yeah, our divisional commander was graciously pleased to bring that to my attention. I've got a job for you. Oh? Yes, this missing girl. I'd like a fellow search of the house. You reckon the mother's done her in? Yeah, it's possible. Now, uh, would you see to it, Jack, and uh, let me know how you get on? Any excuse to get out? Come on, son, we'll do it now. Give your suit an airing. Uh, uh, Bernard. Uh, yes, sir. Inspector Frost is not a typical officer. For certain reasons, he's uh, tolerated. As soon as we find the girl, you'll be back with me, all right? Bernard! All right, sir. Uh, I'm coming. That's all this job seems to be, son. Pushing doorbells. Ah. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Uphill. I'm Detective Inspector Frost, Denton CID. Have you found her? Not yet, Mrs. Uphill, but we should have some news soon. We've got half the county out looking for her. Can we, uh, can we come in, do you think? In here. Please sit down. Uh, can I get you anything? Tea? Coffee? That'd be lovely. But uh, if I could just get a few details first. We were wondering if you had any further thoughts as to where your daughter might have gone. We've tried all the obvious places. Well, if I'd thought of anything, I'd have phoned. Did you quarrel with her? Or can you think of any reason why she might have wanted to run away from home? No. We, we went through all that last night. Ah. You've, uh, you've had a thorough look all over the house, I suppose. The house? How can she possibly be in the house? She could be hiding since half past four yesterday afternoon. Doesn't seem very possible, does it? But uh, I'll tell you what, just for our peace of mind, we'll give the house a quick going over while you make us a cup of tea. Uh, 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 give us a hand to get this back, would you, sir? Inspector, where's her husband? Husband, son? Oh, that's got it. There isn't one. She's not married. The missus is purely a courtesy title, like calling mullet, sir. We'll try the next room. The kids' room. Ooh, it's cold. Radiator's on. It still feels cold and empty. Where does Mrs. Uphill get her money from, sir? There seems to be no shortage. You don't know? No. You're old enough, I suppose. She's a prostitute, son. Sells her body to men at ten quid a time. That's where she gets her money from. Uh, uh, damn! I found the toy cupboard. <laughs> and I bet Mummy had to work hard to provide this little lot. What's left on this floor? Only the bathroom, sir. Right. Go and give it one of your thorough London searches while I shove this little lot back. All finished, son? Uh, yes, sir. Mm. No B-day, eh? I suppose she chucks her fag ends down the toilet. <laughs> Did you have much trouble getting the bath panel off? The bath panel, sir? The bath was boxed in by plastic panels screwed into internal wooden battens. So obvious a hiding place, I'd missed it completely. With an infuriating grin, Frost produced a screwdriver from the depths of his scruffy raincoat and sat on the toilet seat to watch me work. Uh, uh, 
There's nothing here, sir. Are you sure? Poke around, son. A 57-pound suit should stand up to a bit of dirt. No, no, there's nothing. No, I didn't think there would be. But it pays to be thorough, especially at the start of your career. Now then, let's see how quickly you can put it back on. Sir. Damn, she's coming up. I've brought the tea and some... Why have you got the bath panel off? How do you think she could have got... You think she's dead, don't you? Grab the tray, son. Take it easy, Mrs. Uphill. Am I supposed to have killed my own daughter? Why aren't you out there looking for her? That's put us in our place. I wonder if she's hidden the body in the airing cupboard. I've already looked, sir. And is it necessary to be quite so callous? You must make allowances for me, son. I'm sure you've been told that. What do you reckon to this? I found it tucked inside Tracy's Beano Annual. It was an unretouched enlargement of a nude girl, sitting on a draped box, leaning back to show the camera a well-developed body. The model could not be identified, as from the neck up the top half had been torn off, but traces of long dark hair could be seen resting on the shoulders. Processed by an amateur, son. You can still smell the acid fixer. What do you make of that crescent-shaped mark on the right arm? I don't know. Could it be a birthmark? Yeah, that's what I reckon. I wonder who she is, and how did Tracy get hold of it? We've finished, Mrs. Uphill. We didn't find anything. Am I supposed to look surprised or relieved? You want to know something that puzzles me? What? Why didn't you meet Tracy from Sunday school yesterday? I... I don't like the ladies' cigarettes, huh? Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Why didn't you meet her, Mrs. Uppel? I just didn't. We've had a word with the Sunday school superintendent. He says you always met her. Winter, summer, rain or shine. Yesterday was the one and only time you didn't show up. Why? Well, I just didn't. There was no reason. I thought she'd be all right. I don't believe you, Mrs. Uppel. Last summer, a man tried to lure some kids into his car as they came out of that Sunday school. And ever since then, even though it's just at the end of the street, you've met Tracy every damn week without fail. When the sun was blazing down, you met her, but yesterday, when it was pitch dark, you gave it a miss. Why, Mrs. Uphill? Why? Inspector! <laughs> Come on, Mrs. Uphill. Why? Oh, leave me alone, you bastard. I don't care about your feelings, Mrs. Uphill. All I care about is getting help, not you going into bloody hysterics. So why didn't you meet her? I had a man! A regular? Yes. Every Sunday. He was always away by half past three. Plenty of time for me to get down to the Sunday school. But yesterday he was an hour late in arriving. He didn't leave until just before 4.30. There wasn't time. No time? It would only take you a couple of minutes to get there. I wasn't dressed. Yes. Of course. By the time I had dressed and tidied up, it was nearly a quarter to five. Oh, only he'd been up time. Did he say why he was late? Something about a cancelled train. He had to wait for the next. Do you know his name or where he came from? No. He said his name was Bob, but they don't always tell the truth. When he left, which direction did he go? Towards the Sunday school. And he left here just as the kids were coming out. He could have seen her. We'll want a description, Mrs. Uphill. That, at least, should present no difficulty. He's about 34, 35. He... He has a beard, light brown hair. It was a very detailed description, right down to his appendix scar. When she had finished, Frost produced the photograph. Would this be anyone you know, Mrs. Uphill? No. We found it in Tracy's room, hidden in a book. Tracy's room? Where would she have got it from? Do you keep anything like that in the house? No, I... Oh, well, she probably just found it somewhere... It'd have been nothing to kids of her age. Well, don't lose hope, Mrs. Uphill. We'll let you know as soon as we have any news. Go on, sir. Where to, sir? Oh, we'll find somewhere to have lunch, and then I want you to nip down to the railway station. If he visits her every Sunday, the staff should remember him. Mm -hmm. Ah, now there's the Sunday school. Used to be the old vicarage at one time. The actual church is further back. Looks a proper dump. Yeah. My wife's buried in the churchyard. Oh, sorry. Will you be staying here for Christmas? As far as I know. Good. I'm on duty Christmas. 
And Boxing Day. You can come on with me if you like. Now, let's see what the lunches are like at that place. When I returned from the railway station, Frost was sprawled on the back seat of the car, fast asleep. Inspector! Oh, it's you, son. Oh, oh that lunch was diabolical. And that tapioca. Cool. Reminds me about the bloke who drank the spittoon for a bet. Do you know him? Yes, sir. I've no. been to the railway station. I do know our man. He travels up every Sunday from Leffington. And his usual train was cancelled, just as he said. Leffington? We could be in luck, son. What train do you catch back? Usually the 4.33. But yesterday it was the 6.57. 6.57. And he left Mrs. Uphills just on half past four. Mm. It's only half an hour's walk to the station, even for a man with no appendix, which makes him two and a half hours adrift. And what could he have been doing? There isn't a damn thing to do in Denton on a Sunday evening. Even the public toilets shut at five o'clock. It was just after four when we got back to the station to find Sergeant Wells deep in argument with one of the scruffiest, dirtiest, foulest-smelling old tramps I had ever seen. Not leaving here until I get it. Fine thing, isn't it, when the stinking cop spits your bloody money? Go on, Sam. Hop it. Get out or I'll run you in. I'm not going without my quid. Hello, Sam. What's this, then? Come to make your usual donation to the Police Benevolent Fund? I don't have to make a donation. To take it from you. I'm not being personal, Sam, but you don't half stink. Like a hot dustbin with its lid off. Oh, no, no, don't get any nearer. Just stay there. I'm getting itchy just looking at you. Never mind the bleeding insults. Where's my quid? Gentleman wants to know where his quid is, Sergeant. You came in here with sixpence and you were given back sixpence when we turned you out. We didn't charge anything for our hospitality, nor for the fact that you were sick all over our nice clean floor. You had that on the rates with our compliments. What was he in for? Sleeping rough, drinking meths and urinating on the gravestones in the churchyard. These young conservatives. I wasn't so drunk. I didn't know how much I had. But I had one pound and six pence. That young copper put it in an envelope and when he gave it back for me, the quid was gone. It was never there, Sam. You were full of myths. You didn't know what you had. I brought the myths up. All right, Sam. Now, if you had a quid, where'd you get it from? You hadn't been selling your body, I hope. I found it. And now you've lost it. Easy come, easy go. That young copper nicked it. Right. You've made a very serious allegation about a member of this force. Take it you're going to prefer charges. Name? A <laughs> lot of good it would do me if I did. You'd all lie your heads off. Then get out. I'm going. But I'll be back. Got anywhere to sleep tonight, Sam? Ah, oh, mind your own business. What young copper was he talking about? P.C. Stringer, you know. He's as straight as a die. The search parties are all back in, by the way. No trace of the girl. If she's in the open. She won't last through the night. It's getting bitter out there. Yes. Oh, another thing, Jack. Uh, county have been on. They're screaming for your crime statistics return. It must go off tonight. We'll do it now. You any good at figures, son? Station sergeant. Oh, Jack, it's for you. Leffington, please. Oh, tough. Frost? You have? Well, bless your little cotton socks. No, no, we'll do it. We're on our way now. They've traced Mrs. Uphill's bearded Sunday regular. He's a school teacher. Come on, son, let's pay him a visit. Hey, what about the crime statistics? Bags of time. We'll do them when we get back. Yes? Uh, Mr. Stanley Farnham? Yes. We're police officers, sir. Uh, can we come in? Police officers? Show the gentleman your warrant card, son. Oh, uh, yes. There we are, sir. W what's it about? Something I think you'd prefer was not discussed on your doorstep, sir. May we come in? Um, in here. Very nice. Very compact. Well, I'm sorry it's so untidy. I've just got in from school. Yes, we heard you were a teacher. Biology, sir? Uh, no, English. Ah. <laughs> is it all right if my colleague takes a look round? No, it's not all right. What the hell is this about? Do you know a woman called Joan Uphill, Mr. Farnham? Uphill? Uh, 
No, I, I, I don't recall. 29 Vicarage Terrace, Denton. Ten quid a time and a cup of tea after. I'm sorry, I don't know her. She must be lying then, because she says she knows you. Would you object to taking part in an identity parade? Oh, uh, oh wait a minute. Um, uphill, you say? Allow me, sir. You're shaking. All right, all right. I do know her. What has happened to her? Why should anything have happened to her, sir? Well, you know, these women, they do get attacked, but uh, she was all right when I left her. What time was that? Oh, about half past four. Our inquiry is regarding her daughter, Mr. Farnham. Tracy? Why so surprised? You must know about it. It was on the news. It's in all the papers. Isn't this your morning paper on the coffee table, sir? Oh, uh, uh, yes, but I haven't read it yet. It isn't delivered till after I've left for school. Oh. There it is, sir. Police search for missing child. Oh, good Lord. How terrible. Well, you don't think she's here, do you? Is that why you want to search? Because you think she's here? Well, go ahead. Look where you like. I've nothing to hide. Off you go, then, son. right oh, sir. And be thorough. Yes, sir. So you left Mrs. Uphill's about half past four, then, sir? Yes. That would be about the time Tracy was coming out of Sunday school? Yes, I know. I saw her. Where was this? She was walking away from the Sunday school. Towards her home? No, they were walking in the opposite direction. They? She was with a woman. What woman? I don't, I don't know. Describe her. I didn't take an awful lot of notice. It was dark, and I was in a hurry. Medium height, wearing a whitish fur coat. Was she old, young? I didn't notice. You see where they went? No, I, I soon outpaced them. I didn't particularly want Tracy to see me, and I was in a hurry. Why were you in a hurry, sir? Well, I had a train to catch. What train was well, that? Uh, look, I'm, I'm a bit confused. I, I caught the late train. I was hurrying because I had to visit my aunt. I was due there for tea. Your Sunday is a one long round of pleasure, aren't they, sir? Any luck, son? No, sir. I'll get your notebook out, Mr. Farnham. He's going to give us the name and address of his aunt. Yes, oh, oh, you won't go round there, will you? I, I mean, she's an old lady. Her heart's none too good. And... Don't worry, sir. I specialise in old ladies with weak hearts. Well, that damn form must be somewhere, son. Are you sure it's not on your desk? Yes, sir. Hello, Bill. Hello, Jack. Heard the news? They found her? Not the girl. Inspector Carl. He's had an accident. Accident? When? Where? What happened? A lorry smashed into his car. Is he badly hurt? A couple of broken ribs at least. He'll be out of action for a while. Poor old cow. I wouldn't even have wished that on Mullet. So who's he going to put in charge of the Tracy Uphill case? Some big head from county, I suppose. Answer that, Samuel. Sir? Inspector Frost's office? Yes, sir. Uh... Mr. Mullet wants to see you right away, sir. Me? Oh, no. No, even he couldn't be that stupid. Mr. Mullet wouldn't be that stupid, would he, Sergeant? I take it you haven't got a very high opinion of our Mr. Frost, young Barnum. Not for me to say, is it, Sergeant? Oh, come now. I've only known him for 15 years. You've known him for 10 whole hours. It doesn't take 10 hours to find out that a man's uncouth, untidy and a mess. You know yourself, he's only tolerated here. Who told you that? Inspector Cull. Inspector Cull. That's just the sort of thing he would say. And do you know why Jack Frost is tolerated? No. He's tolerated, Barnard, because he's achieved something that Mullet and Cull would give their bloody eye teeth for. Keeps it stuck away in the back here somewhere. Ah. Have a look at that. Go on. Open it. A medal. Not just a medal, Barnard. Ever seen a George Cross before? Because that's what it is. The civilian equivalent of the VC. And it's his, Jack Frost's. That mess you mentioned. Mess? Someone talking about me? What's that doing out? I was just showing it to the lad, Jack. Oh. Give it here, son. How did you win it, sir? Oh, it's a long and boring story. Well, one of our local yobbos popped to the eyeballs on drugs, gets himself a gun and tries to pull off the crime of the century at Bennington's Bank. 
We turned up, and I marched over to get the gun from him. He nearly shot my head off. <laughs> Not a bad little medal. They prefer you to get killed before they give it to you, but they make an exception if their stocks are building up. What did he want to see you about, Jack? As headquarters haven't got any suitable officers to spare, I am now in full charge of the Tracy Uphill investigation. Congratulations. Mind you, I've been given my orders. I'm to stay well away from the press, buy a new suit, and report to Mullet every five minutes. Apart from that, I've got a completely free hand. Well, come on, son. Stop messing about with those figures. Let's see how my subordinates are managing without us in search control. How's it going, Arthur? Hello, Jack. I'm told you're our new boss. Thank God you know. I was afraid I'd have to break the bad news. Oh, have you met Clive Barnard, alias Joseph, and his Technicolor Dreamcoat? Uh, Clive, this is Detective Sergeant Arthur Hanlon. How do you do? Any news on the woman in the white fur, Arthur? Nothing. Your bloke Farnham seems to be the only person who saw her. If he did see her. First thing tomorrow, son, we must check up on Auntie. Don't let me forget. Right, sir. A uh, couple of other things, Jack. You know we've been checking up on known child molesters. Mm. Uh, Foxtrot Tango came up with something interesting. Oh, what? Mickey Hoskins didn't turn up for work today. Did he check his dicks? He hasn't been there since Sunday. Ah, I want him found and brought in, Arthur. Put an all patrols message out. Right. Who's Mickey Hoskins, sir? <laughs> He's got more form than your suit's got red stripes, sir. Indecent exposure, indecent assault, a lot. He's got a special liking for young girls. So he's still with Mar Bowsey, then, Arthur? God, I wouldn't need a meal she'd cooked or coughed over if you paid me a million pounds. Which reminds me, did I ever tell you the joke about the bloke who drank the spittoon for a bet? Yes, in the canteen over dinner. Oh, so I did. Do you know it, son? Uh, there was this bloke. I've he? heard it, sir. Oh. Anything else, then, Arthur? Oh, usual crank calls. Oh, Martha Wendell's been on again. She says the spirits have got an important message for us about her body. Oh, We'll follow it through, Arthur, the way we've followed all our other spirit messages through. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to try and manage without us for a while, Arthur. We've got the crime statistics to do. Right, son, bring your chair over to my desk. Sir? Shouldn't take us more than a couple of hours. Ah, uh, where's me pen? Hello? You haven't borrowed any of my money, have you, sir? No, sir. Well, that's odd. It was about 45 pence in small change here. Frost? Oh, blimey, Arthur, we've only just left you. You'll have to learn to manage on your own, you know. What? No, I'll handle it. I'm on my way now with Flash Harry. Forget the crime statistics, son, we're going out. Yes, sir. Uh... The headmaster of Tracy's school just phoned. He doesn't know if it's important, but a girl called Audrey Harding, 12 years old, never turned up for school today. And Audrey is a close friend of Tracy Uphill. It took us 15 minutes to get to the girl's house, and as a schoolgirl was involved, we'd collected a woman police constable on the way. The door was opened by a loin-stirring blockbuster in tight denim jeans and a cotton T-shirt that stretched a bursting point across a mouth-watering, unrestricted, jiggling bosom. Uh, I'm sorry to bother you, Miss. We, we, uh, we're police officers. Who is it? Carol singers? No, police. Police? What is it? What's the matter? Uh, Mrs. Harding. Yes? Do you have a little girl called Audrey? I'm Audrey. You? How old are you? Twelve, nearly thirteen. She's big for her age. Mm. Uh, yes. <clears throat> uh, can we come in? We were ushered into a tiny hothouse of a kitchen. Frost nodded for the woman police constable to start the questions. You weren't at school today, Audrey. She's uh, got a bad chest. <coughs> uh, camphorated oil's very good. About two gallons. They haven't sent the police down just because I kept her away from school, surely? No, it's about Tracy Uphill. I believe you know her, Audrey. I know her. 
Her mother's a tart. Maybe she is, but you shouldn't say so. Not in company. There's some things you don't talk about. My uncle was an undertaker, but we never mentioned it to anyone. Well, some things are best left unsaid. Mm. You, uh, you don't go to Sunday school, do you, Audrey? Only to ballet classes and tap dancing. We believe in religion and that sort of thing, but we don't want it rammed down our throat, especially on a Sunday. Tracy's been missing from her home since half past four yesterday afternoon, Mrs Harding. Didn't you know? Tracy? Is that the girl they've been talking about on the wireless? Well, I'd never connected her. She's a friend of yours, Audrey. I knew her a bit, but I haven't seen her outside school for a couple of weeks. Are you sure? My girl's not a liar. Can you think of anywhere she might have gone? <gasps> no. Oh, she was seen going off with a woman in a white fur coat. Any idea who that woman might be? No idea at all. Do you play bingo, Mrs Harding? Twice a week down the old grand cinema. Yeah, how did you know? Well, we had these reports about a beautiful woman seen playing down there. And I happened to notice your bingo card on the mantelpiece. Oh, Aren't you observant? <laughs> Eyes everywhere. Oh, I've had one or two very good wins. I thought I was onto a winner the minute I spotted you. And I bet you'll make a lovely cup of tea. Would you like one? It won't take a minute. Lovely. I'll put the kettle on. It only wants topping up. There's no rush. Oi. Fanny. You talking to me? Yeah. Does your mother know you borrow her coat? What coat? A white fur hanging behind the door. She bought it with her bingo money. She'll murder me if she finds out. You wore it yesterday, didn't you? When you met Tracy from Sunday school. Oh, I just wanted to show off the coat. I didn't want her to come with me. Didn't want her to, but she did. I said she'd have to go the minute me fella turned up. Your fella? My boyfriend. I was meeting him at the gates to the field by Meadow Lane. What happened when he arrived? Did she go? Well, she pretended to, but she followed us. Open for an Eiffel, I expect. We ended up in the wood. Why'd you go there? To try and shake her off, but she kept following. In the end, we ran and hid behind that big tree, the one by the lake. She went racing past, so me and my boyfriend backtracked to the main road. You left a kid of eight to find her own way home from those woods in the pitch dark? We never asked her to follow us. Anyway, she knew the way back, and she wasn't going home. She said she was going to play in the old vicarish grounds. So you left her? Where did you go after that? To me boy's house. His parents were out. What did you do there? What do you think? You won't tell me, Mum, will you? Not unless I have to. Ah, the old brown juice. Now, help yourself. <laughs> so we sipped hot, sweet tea and chatted. My eyes were drawn to our policewoman who had slipped off her greatcoat. She was lovely. A sharp dig from Frost's elbow brought me painfully back to earth. The girl, son. Look at the girl. Twelve-year-old Audrey was examining the perfection of her right shoulder. She had pulled back the sleeve of her T-shirt, and there it was. A crescent-shaped birthmark. The birthmark we had last seen in black and white on the headless, nude photograph found in Tracy's bedroom. As soon as we were back in the car... Frost radioed through to control for the woods to be searched thoroughly. At the market square, the WPC asked to be dropped off. You on standby then, Hazel? Yes, sir. I'll tell you what, I'll walk to the station from here. Young Clive can run you home in the car. All right, son? Yes. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, try and be good. Uh. He's sweet, isn't he? Is he? Where do you live? Oh, Martin Road. It's about five minutes from here. Ah, you'll have to pass my digs. How about dropping off for a cup of coffee? Coffee's nearly ready. Good. I'm sorry there's only the bed to sit on. Oh, it's very comfortable. Isn't it hot in here? Hmm. Mind if I take my tunic off? No. Of course not. Oh, now I'm cold. Come and warm. Mm. <laughs> oh, 
there you are, son. Damn! Lucky I spotted your light. Oh. They found a scarf in the woods. Could be the girls. Oh, hello, Hazel. Didn't see you under there. You weren't talking about anything important, were you? We found the scarf here, sir. Caught on this bush. Mm. What's down there? Willow Lake. I reckon that's where we're going to find her. Perhaps. First light tomorrow, we'll have it dragged. Of course, it might not be her scarf. Come on, son, we'll see if old Mother Uphill can identify it. You want us to carry on searching, Inspector? Oh, we'll give it another couple of hours. There's the slimmest chance she's still alive, and a few more hours out in this would finish her off. An expensive car passed us as we turned into Vicarage Terrace, and the rich smell of cigar smoke in Mrs Uphill's lounge betrayed a recently departed visitor. Frost murmured something to me about business as usual, then he showed her the scar. At first, I thought she was going to faint, but she pulled herself together. Yes, it, it's hers. We found it in the woods, Mrs. Uphill. We'll have men searching there all night. What's up, son? She shouldn't be on her own. Someone should stay the night with her. Thinking of volunteering? I'll lend you the ten quid if you're sure. <sighs> Where to, sir? Back to the station. We'll lay on the dragon of the lake tomorrow, and then off home. Your yawning's getting on my nerves. So, back again to the station, through the lobby doors and the arranging of the dragging of the lake. We were actually leaving when Frost remembered the crime statistics. Did you get those figures out, sir? You told me... To leave them, sir. Well, well, bang goes out early night. Oh. Bring a chair over here. We should do it in half an hour. Even with Frost's hair-raising shortcuts, which grossly abuse the laws of arithmetic, it took us over 90 minutes. But at last, the job was done, and the return chucked into the out tray. How goes the time, son? Nearly half past one in the morning. Oh, well, just one more job to do, then we can all go home. As we passed through the lobby, he called out to the sergeant on duty. Just going to the woods with the new chap? The new chap. I felt as if I'd been trotting along behind Frost for 20 years. 20 long years. Found anything else, lads? No, sir. <coughs> All right, all right. What with him yawning and you coughing? Ah, <coughs> oh, pack it in. Hello. Did you feel that? Snow. All we need. It's going to be a bitch dragging that lake tomorrow. Trust me to get weather like this. Expect a cold would have had sunshine and bluebirds. Hello, who the hell is this? Oh, no. Not him. Hello, Inspector. So, this is where you're hiding, eh? <laughs> Any luck yet? Son, this is Sandy Lane, chief reporter of the Denton Echo. Oh. Sandy, Detective Constable Barnard. Oh, she ought to be uh, hopping up to the surface soon if she's in there, shouldn't she, Jack? If she's in there? Oh, she's got to be. Well, if I haven't dragged myself here at the crack of dawn for nothing, I've already written the headlines. Local clairvoyance prediction fulfilled... Body found in woods. Yeah, and you could have a photograph of the girl's house with the caption, Santa won't be calling here this year. You know that's not bad. <sighs> Hello. I think they found something. Excuse me. It's only a log. But let him find out for himself and I hope he falls in. Yeah. Oi, Constable. Sir? What's that hut over there? The Model Boat Club. Use it in the summer, sir. It's all locked and empty now. Are you sure? Yes, sir. We got the key from the club secretary and searched it last night. Well, let's take another look at it. I've got one of my nasty feelings. This door's been forced. Only since yesterday, then, sir. There's something wedged behind it. Ah. Give us a hand. I right, sir. Uh, oh, my God. You found her? Oh. Prediction fulfilled. Body found in woods. But it was the wrong body. 
It wasn't the child. It was an old man. Sam. The tramp who had marched into the station demanding the return of his pound. He had frozen to death. He must have broken in last night for somewhere to sleep. Poor old devil. So what chance does the girl stand? Oh, I wasn't here when you found him, Constable. Sir? I've got enough paperwork on my desk to keep me going without filling in forms for him. Oh. What's up, Barnard? Never seen a dead end before? Not like that, sir. Oh, this one's caviar compared with the first body I saw. He was a tramp, too. Oh, no, Jack, not that story. The boy hasn't heard it, Sandy. Years ago, this was, son, when I was new to the force. They'd found the remains of this old tramp in a derelict house in the middle of a glorious heat wave. Well, they scraped him up oh. and delivered him to the morgue. And... Hello. They finished dragging. She's not... She... She's not in the lake, sir. Then where is she? I don't know. Come on, son, let's try the Sunday school. Sorry we couldn't oblige, Sandy. Anyone at home? Rambling sort of place, sir. Yeah, this used to be the old vicarage years ago, son, but it was miles too big. Now it's just used for Sunday school, scouts, the old mother's meeting. Uh -huh. There should be a resident caretaker somewhere. Anyone at home? Who's that? Were you one? You, Mr. Barrow, the caretaker? Yeah. Police. It's about young Tracy Uphill. Well, a terrible business, that. Terrible. We want to look around, Mr. Barrow. Well, she's not here. How do you know? Why, no, she was here. Besides, I've looked around myself. This is a rabbit warren of a place. Too much for one man to do properly. No. It's, it's not convenient now, I've got other things to do. Can't you come back later? No need. You carry on with your work. We'll do it on our own. And don't worry, we won't pinch anything. I've got all the Bibles I can read back home. Come on, son, we'll start at the top. Last one, son. We'll do this, and we'll go home. Somebody's been in here recently. Smell that cigarette smoke. Try the light switch. It's pitch dark. None of the others have worked, sir. Wow! Blimey, it's bright. I think it's a photo flood, sir. I don't like the look of that, son. It was an ominously large, battered Edwardian cabin trunk. It was fitted with a new, strong brass padlock. One of my keys might conceivably fit. No. Uh, yes. Ah. Old hymn books. Hardly worth the effort. And hardly worth such a strong lock, either, sir. Like me, son, you compensate for your lack of dress sense with brains. Let's dig a little deeper. At the bottom of the trunk, we found a camera and an envelope. The envelope contained gems from Barrow's photographic collection, including black and white enlargements of Mrs. Uphill in full unretouched nudity and photographs of an undressed nubile 12 year old Audrey Harding sitting on this same cabin trunk sprawling provocatively against the wall only this time the head was not torn off so now we know why Barrow didn't want us to search the place oh, I was afraid of this I'd heard the odd rumour. What do we do now, sir? Stick everything back, say nothing. None of our business. None of our business? The girl's underage, sir! Well, she certainly doesn't look it. I'll tell you something, my son. If she stuck those monsters under my nose, I certainly wouldn't waste time asking to see her birth certificate. Yeah. We're looking for a missing child. We're not interested in this muck. This is trivia. I'll have a quiet word with that when I get round to it. He's fairly harmless. Just bung everything back as it was. <sighs> We haven't seen it. And hurry, we should be back at the station. The silly bitch! Do you see that red mini? Shot straight out in front of us. Women, drivers. And I thought she could do no wrong in your eyes. Or don't you recognise her with her clothes on? Eh? It was your girlfriend, Mrs. Uphill. 
I wonder why she's in such a hurry. Some poor devil in urgent need of her services, I suppose. We spotted her again as we drove through the market square. She was leaving Bennington's bank, clutching a large plastic bag. Stop the car, son. I'm feeling nosy. He disappeared into the bank, returning a few moments later, grinning from ear to ear. Guess what, son? Uh, she's just drawn out 500 quid in used onces. 500 pounds? She could be buying Christmas presents for her regulars, of course. But my guess is she's received a ransom demand. Inspector Frost, what's the trouble, Bill? Whew. It's snowing like mad out there. It's been pretty stormy in here as well. Mr. Mullet wants you. Oh? What have I done now? The briefing meeting. Oh, God. You were supposed to be running it in Inspector Cull's absence. Now you come to mention it, Mullet did tell me last night. I suppose he's upset. Upset? He's spitting blood. And to make matters worse, the chief constable turned up for a surprise visit. It was a shambles. Oh, God. Sergeant Wills? Uh, Yes, sir. He's just come in. Yes, sir. Mr. Mullet wonders if he could spare a few moments of your valuable time. Mm. I'll wear me medal. He's too much of a coward to sack a gallant hero. Now, come on, Mickey. This way. Hello, hello, hello. What have we here, then? Mickey Hoskins, our friendly neighbourhood child molester, sir, missing from his dig since Sunday. He's been hiding from us. What's all this about? I've got nothing to say. You can't hold me here. I know the judge's rules. You must tell me what they are, Mickey. I always forget them. Interview room, lads. Get the implements seated up. Sir. I've just got to go and have a rollicking from the divisional commander. Then I'll be right back. How much longer are you going to keep me? Inspector will be along in a minute. Ah, about time. I was just going. Sorry, Mick. I've got so many ventures on the boil at the moment, I forgot all about you. Uh, first, I must have a fag. Uh, <clears throat> oh, I'd, I'd offer you one, Mick, but I've only got 16 left. Now, what did I want to talk to you about? Oh, I know. Tracy Uphill. Oh, she? I've got a photograph somewhere. Ah, there. You taking all this down, Sims? Yes, sir. Good. Well, Mickey? Well, what? It's a young kid. A nice-looking young kid. See anything like a photograph? When am I supposed to have seen her? How about Sunday afternoon? No. Did you ever go at her on Sunday, Mick? Did she like it? Did you like it? Stop it! Stop it! I never saw her on Sunday! You don't have to shout, Mick. You can lie just as well in a quiet voice. Now, come on, tell us what happened. What did you do to her? Come on, give us a cheap thrill. I didn't think she'd mind. Some of them don't. They love it. She was sitting all on her own, in, in, inviting light. So I moved over and sat next to her. Where was it? Century Cinema, next. That's what you're on about, isn't it? Uh, yes, of course. She let me get my hand right up her leg before she screamed. If she didn't want it, why didn't she complain earlier? Perhaps she didn't want to miss a good bit of the film. Inspector. Excuse me, Mick. Yeah, what is it? Uh, we've uh, had a report of this incident, sir. A century cinema man tried to molest this woman about 30. She screamed, so he hit her in the face, breaking her nose. It was a chase, but he got away. He's not talking about Tracy. Oh. <clears throat> uh, sorry about that, Mick. He just wanted to know how to spell dirty bastard. But the old dear was pushing 30, Mick. A bit ancient for you, surely. It was an X programme. They don't let kids in. Oh, I see. Now, I'll send someone else in to take a statement, Mick. I get too excited when I hear about thighs and knickers and things. <laughs> I can't hold my pencil steady. Here, here, wait a minute. I just remembered. Tracy Uphill. That's that missing kid. Eight years old. You didn't think I had anything to do with her, did you? Of course not, Mick. Had to ask, though. Well, you'd have been offended if I hadn't. You wanted to see me, Jack? Yes, Arthur. And shut that flipping door. It's perishing. We haven't all got your fat to protect us. There's been a development. Young Clive's just got back from Mrs. Uphill. She's had a ransom demand. What? Read the note to Arthur, son. Sir. I have got your daughter, Tracy. 
If you want to see her alive, get £500 in used ones and wait by phone for instructions. Tell police and I kill her. Local postmark caught the 615 collection yesterday evening. Can she raise that sort of money? She drew it out of the bank this morning and wasn't going to tell us. You did well, son. Thank you, sir. You'd better rush it over to Forensic. Not that it'll do us any damn good. Come in. Oh, hello, sir. I hear through the grapevine that there's been a ransom demand, Inspector. Uh, quite right, sir. I was just about to bring it in to you. Here. Mm. Better get this over to Forensic. What a good idea. Remember to do that, will you, sir? Sir, I've, um, I've brought these files from Inspector Cull's office. This is the electronic calculator theft job I'm anxious to see cleared up. Oh, thank you, sir. I can't wait to get my teeth into this little dot. What will you do about the ransom demand? I doubt if it's genuine, but I'll have a phone tap just in case. So if you're one of her regulars, sir, I'd lay off phoning for a while. I don't think that's very funny, Inspector. I'm sorry, sir. Mm. Now, what do you know about a woman called Martha Wendell? Cranky old cow. Lives in a broken-down cottage in the woods. Dabbles in the occult and sends us a lot of worthless spirit messages. Ah, but are they worthless? She predicted we'd find a body in the woods, and this morning one of our constables discovered the corpse of a tramp. The chief constable suggests we might see if she can help in locating Tracy Uphill. You don't believe in that rubbish, do you? As always, I have an open mind. So, let me know how you get on. A pompous git! What do you think he's running, a psychic research laboratory? Not in front of the children, Jack. Eh? Oh, forgive my little outburst, son. Uh, I hold all my superiors in the highest possible esteem. Sir? Right, Arthur, send somebody over to bug Mrs. Apple's phone and make certain they haven't got ten quid on them. I want a quick and thorough job. OK, Jack. Come on, son. We'll grab something to eat and then go and visit old Mother Wendell in the witch's cottage. I hate attending seances on an empty stomach. Always like to have something to bring up. Who is it? Police, Mrs. Wendell. Open up. Come in. I've been expecting you. The smell clouted us as soon as we stepped inside. An overpowering, acrid stench that rammed itself up our noses and stuck its filthy fingers right down our throats. Blimey, Mrs. Wendell. How many cats have you got in here? There were dozens of them. Dirty, mangy, sore-ridden, incontinent strays. The untouchables of the cat underworld. Oh, cats are welcome here. Sit down. Oh, Tom. <coughs> Get off, you cow, son. Charming. Cats are my friends, Inspector. Please be more careful. I will. I, uh... I expect the spirits have told you why we're here, Mrs. Wendell. Miss Wendell. Oh, Miss Wendell. It's about the missing girl. I haven't seen her. I told your men yesterday. It's been suggested you might be able to help us. I understand you claim special powers. You've had proof. You found a tramp. How did you know we'd found him? The reporter told me. Yes. But there's more death in the woods. Uh, more death... I see, I see an unmarked grave. Where? What's up with her? I think she's in a trance, sir. Miss Wendell! But don't touch her. It's supposed to be dangerous, sir. Uh, 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 so cold under the snow. So cold. Bones. Old bones, buried. Where is she buried? The woods. Hollow. Dead. Man's hollow. What'd she say? It sounded like dead man's hollow, sir. Is there such a place? Yeah. I don't know its proper name. We've always called it that. But trance or no trance, Miss Wendell... I hope for your sake we don't find Tracy buried there. What do you think, sir? I don't believe in ghosts, son. If we find Tracy buried in Dead Man's Hollow, then she put her there. 
She's mad enough to kill a kid if she caught one chucking stones at her lousy cat. But if she killed her, why tell us where she buried her? To divert suspicion from herself. Control to Inspector Frost. Control to Inspector Frost. Come in, please. Control. Frosty. Can you come in at once, please, Inspector? The kidnapper has phoned Mrs. Uphill. Denton 2346? Denton 2346? Mrs. Uphill. Yes? Did you get my letter? Where's Tracy? All in good time. You got the money? Yes. Exactly as you said. And you've told no one? No one. I swear. Good. Very sensible. Now listen carefully. Is she all right? Well, all things considered. <laughs> yes. But it's up to you that she stays that way. What do you want me to do? I want... Hello? Hello? That's all there is. So what happened? Was he cut off or what? I'll turn the volume up and replay the last few seconds. I think you'll spot it. Face that way. What do you want me to do? I want... Hello? Hello? Did you hear the siren? One of our cars must have passed the kiosk. He thought we were on to him and bolted. Blasted uniform branch, always in the wrong place at the wrong time. Oh, uh, hello, sir. Hello, Frost. Did the GPL trace the call? Yes, Jack. Uh, Inspector. The call box on the main Eastern Avenue. Charlie Alpha was in the vicinity, so I've sent them to investigate. No one there, though. Charlie Alpha. It was probably them that frightened him off in the first place. Are they keeping the kiosk under observation? For a while... But I can't see him using the same phone box. Never know your luck. We've had so much vandalism lately, you'll have a job finding another one that works. I am sorry, sir. I'm neglecting you. No, not at all. I just wanted to know how you got on with the Wendell woman. Ah, it was quite interesting, actually. Her cat peed all over us, and then we had a seance. According to her spiritual snouts, Tracy is buried in Dead Man's Hollow. Dead Man's Hollow? Did you take a look? Well, we looked at the four foot of snow covering it, and it looked pretty much like the snow covering everywhere else. I don't think she's there, sir. We've got to check. Organise a digging party. I'm going to phone the chief constable. <sighs> Stupid twit. All right, Arthur, you heard the man. Organise a digging party, evening grass, spades and gumboots. <clears throat> I'll join them in the car park in ten minutes. Job for you too, sir. Yes, sir. Something we forgot. Farnham, Mrs Uphill's Sunday regular. We haven't checked his story with his aunt. Oh, damn. Now, don't forget, she's got a weak heart, so don't show her your suit and go easy with the rubber hose. I'll be in my office if anyone wants me. Yeah? Cup of tea, Inspector. Oh, Tom. Uh, Hold on a minute, will you? Push the door shut. Sir? Sit down. You smoke? No, sir. Stringer, is he? Police Constable Derrick Stringer? That's right, sir. Tell me, son. Well, to within a couple of quid, how much money have you pinched in total? Uh, I don't know what you mean, sir. Now, look, son, you might think me useless and decrepit, but I'd be a real right twit if I couldn't solve a simple case of somebody nicking money from my own desk drawer. Money that's always missing after you've been in with the team. And you took that tramp's quid as well, didn't you? I'm not staying here. I, I, I'm reporting this to the Police Federation representative. If you've got anything further to say... Sit down. What did official, son? All right. I'll call the divisional commander in and tell him I want your pockets searched. You see, I marked the money. What happens now? Entirely up to you, son. I've got enough on my plate with missing kids, ransom demands, and piddling cats. Come on, Jordan, put a bit of beef into it. If there is a body there, it won't bite you. I just don't like the idea, sir. You don't know how lucky you are. My first corpse was nearly liquid. Oh, Jack? Jack Frost? Who the hell's there? I can see a torch. Oh, no. Hello, Sandy. What are you doing here? I hear you're hoping to dig up another body. Then you hear wrong. This is a police allotment and we're putting in cabbages. Who told you? I have my sources. By the way, 
Jack. Uh, dropping to the office tomorrow. I've, I've got a little uh, seasonal bottle for you with our compliments. It had better not be too little. Inspector, signs of recent digging here. There's something buried. The girl? No, just some bones. Show me. Here. Give me that trowel. No, not just bones. I'd say we've got a complete human skeleton. Damn. Just what we needed. It's a skeleton. There seems to be something chained to its wrist. If I could pull... Ooh. It's, it's a metal case of some kind. A case? Ah. Show me. Yeah. Wait a minute. I thought so. See what it says, Jack? Just about. Bennington's Bank. Yes. Ooh, the spirits have come up with a goodie this time. I reckon we have here the mortal remains of Rupert Forkus. Who the hell's he then? Oh, it would have been before your time, Jack. Forkus was chief cashier at Bennington's Bank. Back in 1951, he was sent to another branch with £25,000 chained to his wrist and was never seen again. We all thought he'd absconded. Ooh, this'll make the London dailies. 1951? If you weren't here, I'd cover it up and swear we never found him. Work this is going to cause. Here. Do you reckon that money is still in the case? Uh, oh, it's well rusted, sir. Shall I uh, fetch your axle? No. Leave everything. No. It's too complicated for the likes of us. Get control to send a full forensic team down here and a pathologist. Uh, right, sir. And uh, tell him there's no great hurry. Mm. He's been waiting for us for over 25 years. So that's the way I've organised it, Jack. I start searching the outlying eastern sections tomorrow. Good. You must try and remember to turn up at the briefing meeting. Oh, damn, I meant to buy myself a new suit. Oh, Mullet's made a couple of pointed remarks about this one, and... and Ma Wendell's cats haven't improved it either. Unless it's you, Arthur. Thank you very much. Ah, here's young Barnard. Heard about my skeleton, son? Uh, yes, sir. Everywhere I go, I find bodies. Only I could find one about 19 years old with a big chest. Yes, sir. Here, when you get a chance, son, nip up the storeroom and dig out the Bennington's Bank file, 1951. Mm -hmm. I'll try and solve that before tea, together with that electronic theft thing that Mullet keeps rabbiting about. So what happened with Auntie? She hasn't seen Farnham for nearly three months. Ah, he was lying. I knew it. You can never trust Randy Rascals. Oh, present company accepted, of course not. Jack, yeah, Mrs. Uphill's phone's ringing. Switch it through the loudspeaker. Son, get control to ask Charlie Alpha if they can see anyone in the kiosk. Sir. Control, right. Charlie Alpha, anyone in the kiosk? Dendon 2346. Quiet! Remember me? Yes. How's Tracy? Do what you're told and you'll be able to see for yourself. Charlie Alpha reports kiosk empty, sir. Damn. Then tell me what to do. Put the money in a carrier bag. Walk with it down the bath road towards Exum. I'll go by car. No. Walk. You understand? You'll walk on the left-hand side. Now, just past the antique shop, there's a public call box. Wait there. I'll ring you with further instructions. Hello, search control. Just a minute. GPO engineer, sir. Can't trace the call. No matter. Get him to monitor all calls from the phone box outside the antique shop. Sir? You, Sims. Sir? Get Mrs. Uphill on the phone for me. Sir? Arthur, tell Control to send Charlie Alpha to the antique shop kiosk. No sirens, no flashing lights. They've just got to wait for Mrs. Uphill to arrive, right? Mrs. Uphill's not answering, sir. Don't tell me she's left already. Damn the woman. Keep trying. Right, sir. Charlie Alpha's in position, Jack. Good. There to report the minute Mrs. Uphill comes into sight. We should have someone following her, sir. Should we, Sam? Bath roads as straight as a die. Anyone following will be spotted a mile off. Well, nothing to do now but to wait. How long should it take her, Arthur? Ten minutes? Quarter of an hour? Yes. Just a minute. Charlie Alpha, sir. What? Nothing to report. <laughs> Tell him not to be so efficient. I am not interested in nothing. Uh, thank you, Control. Something's gone wrong. She should be there by now. It's a weather, Jack. 
She won't be able to walk fast in the snow, not in high heels. She wouldn't give a damn about high heels. She'd run barefoot to get her kid back. She's had time to walk all the way to Bath and back by now. Are you sure those two bright herberts are waiting at the right phone box? Shall I check? No, no, no. They're not that stupid. Phone Mrs. Uphill's house again, Arthur. She might have popped back for something. Excuse me, Inspector. Yes, Bill. Sorry to butt in, Jack, but you've got Charlie Alpha standing by in the Bath Road, haven't you? That's right. Why? Reckon I could borrow them? We've just had a motorist phone in. He's found a woman unconscious at the side of the road. We've sent for an ambulance, but Charlie Alpha could be there in seconds, and I'd like details. They were just loading the stretcher onto the ambulance as we arrived. It was Joan Uphill. Her face grey and crumpled, her breathing almost non existent. Gordon? How is she? What happened? We don't know what happened, sir. She's not regained consciousness. She's had a nasty crack on the head, but the ambulance man doesn't think the skull is fractured. It's lucky that motorist spotted her. She could have frozen to death. Yeah, yeah. Did she have anything with her? Only this handbag. Show me. Here. Purse is missing. She should have been carrying a plastic carrier bag. Well, that's all there was, sir. Look for it. Held a large sum of money. Give him a hand, son. Yes, sir. Yeah. Is this the gentleman who found her? Yes, sir. Well, he's got all my details. Can I go now? A couple of questions, sir. I'm, uh, I'm Detective Inspector Frost, Denton CID. Uh, did you see what happened to her? Oh, I've already been through all this. I spotted her in the headlights. I thought she'd been knocked down by a knit and run. I, I didn't expect to have to stand in the cold and answer the same questions twice over. I've got an urgent appointment and I'm late now. Always the way when you try and help, isn't it, sir? <laughs> You got the gentleman's particulars, Constable? Yes, sir. Well, then, I don't think... Sir? That... Yes, sir? There's no sign of it, sir. Ah. You, you didn't spot a plastic carrier bag, sir, by any chance? I've already told you everything I saw. I can't help you any more. Uh, you don't mind if we have a look in your boot? Me boot? What the hell is this? I mean, I just stopped to report an accident. Won't take a second, sir. There's some money missing, you see. And you'd naturally want us to eliminate you from our inquiries. Seems to be locked, sir. Oh, oh thank you. Just for formality, you understand? I mean, I... Well, well, well. Electronic calculators. Hundreds of them. I think we've just sold one of Inspector Cull's outstanding cases, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I believe this to be stolen property, sir. Would you care to explain how it happens to be in your possession? Oh, what rotten, lousy, stinking luck. I, mean, I could have driven straight past, left her to die. I don't think you could, sir. You're not that sort. Escort the gentleman to the station, Jordan. Sir. If anyone wants me, I'll be at the hospital. I can't tell you anything. I... I heard a sort of rustling in the hedge, then something hit me. Next thing I knew, I was in here. You're not too badly hurt, Mrs. Uphill. They'll be letting you go home tomorrow. Tracy? Any news of Tracy? No. No, not yet. That man who phoned. It was a trick, wasn't it? We think so, but we'll carry on monitoring your phone just in case. By the way, he took your purse. What was in it? About 20 pounds, my house and car keys. They don't matter. Just one Tracy. This hospital gives me the shudders. My wife was in here, you know. They were very nice. Unrestricted visiting. So there was no excuse for not going. And not a blind thing to talk about. <laughs> People think I miss her terribly. Between you and me, she made my life a hell. I hated her. But she didn't deserve such a rotten death. No one deserves that. Ah, that's better. This con man's only a small time crook, you know. Why do you say that, sir? 500 quid. She'd have given him ten times that much to... Oh, Tom. Here he's got her keys. And the house is empty. Yes, sir. 
Feel like taking a little drive down to Vicarage Terrace, my son? We caught the man leaving the back of the house staggering under the weight of two large suitcases packed solid with loot. The plastic carrier bag with the 500 pounds in used notes was on the back seat of his car, lying alongside a purse containing around 20 pounds. We'll need more cells if you go on like this, Jack. By the way, did you know young Derek Stringer has resigned? Has he? I didn't know. Pity. He was a good chap. Could have been another Jack Frost if he'd worked at it. <sighs> one tramp, one skeleton and two crooks. Yeah, not bad. I think we'll call it a day, son. Oh, yes, please, sir. Now, don't let me forget the briefing meeting tomorrow. Tomorrow. Blimey. Do you realise it'll be Christmas Eve? He made the briefing meeting and tried to inject some enthusiasm into the dispirited searchers. No one said anything as they walked out into the snow, but they all knew they were no longer looking for a girl. They were looking for a body. <laughs> Inspector Frost! Oh, well, the elders he want. Wait for me in the office, would you, son? Right out, sir. You want me, sir? We shut the door. Sir. The same suit, I see. Uh, yes, sir. Mm. The chief constable's breathing down my neck. Do you think we'll find the girl today? It's Christmas tomorrow. I'd like to get it all tied up by then. Our chaps deserve a break. So do I. We'll do our best for you, sir. Who's on duty tomorrow? I am, sir. And Boxing Day. Oh, well... It ought to be quiet. Give you a chance to catch up on your paperwork. Where do I file this, sir? There? Oh, blimey, son, give that here. I've been looking for it everywhere. And what's this you've dumped on my desk? The Bennington's bank file, sir. You asked for it last night. Must have been mad. Haven't got time to read that. Frost? Forensic? Hello, how's our skeleton? He was dead, I suppose. What? You sure? Right, I'll be down there as soon as I can. Yeah, well, don't we all want to pack up early for Christmas? Never rains, but it pours. That was forensic, our skeleton. First, there was no 25,000 quid in the metal case, and it hadn't been forced. It had been unlocked with a key. What? But here's the best bit, son. When they cleaned up the skull, they found a bullet hole right through the back of its head. So we got a 25-year-old murder mystery. Oh, God. I think I'll punish myself and go up to the canteen to have the special Christmas lunch. We returned from lunch to find Detective Sergeant Hanlon waiting for us. Well, if it isn't the fat owl of the remove. Clear out, Arthur. There's no tuck for you here. Cheek, I've missed the Christmas lunch because of you. You missed nothing. It was diabolical. You asked me to see that chap Farnham, Jack. Farnham? In which of my many current cases does he appear? The schoolmaster. Oh, Mrs. Uphill's bearded regular. And what did he have to say for himself? He admits he lied about having tea with his aunt. The truth is, on his way back to the railway station, he was accosted by a platinum blonde in a leopard skin coat. Cynthia Richmond. Don't tell me she's back on the game. Yes, I've seen her. He was with her until after six. So there's another suspect we could eliminate from our inquiries. Are you all right, sir? I'm all right, sir. I've been having a few drinks with Sandy Lane. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's been pumping me about our skeleton and the bullet hole. I met a couple of the search parties coming back. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. She'd been missing since Sunday, and what have I achieved? Damn all. <laughs> I've sold a couple of tubs, saved me little crimes on the side, but I've no more hopes of finding her than I have of finding out who killed that skeleton 20... 25 years ago. Sir? Twenty-five 
years. Now, how did Martha Wendell know the skeleton was buried there? Uh, she's a clairvoyant. If it's been buried for 25 years, how come her clairvoyant powers hadn't worked before? We were told about the tramp in 24 hours. No, son. There were signs of recent digging. She had dug and she'd uncovered it, and that is how she knew. But why should she go digging in Dead Man's Hollow? To bury a body, son. A child's body. Dear God. But the very place she picked because it was hidden and out of the way had already been picked by somebody else for the very same reason 25 years ago. You know why we're here, Miss Wendell? Yes. I've been expecting you. She came here on Sunday. She threw stones at my cat. And one of them... She killed one of them. Go on. Well, I was so angry, I, I don't know what I did. I, I must have banged her head. I don't know. I, I didn't mean to kill her, just to punish her. Well, I died the body. I fought a dead man's hollow, but when I dug... You uncovered an older grave. We know. Then what? Well, I waited until night, but your men were still in the woods and... Next day it snowed. Well, I'd have left footprints. So what did you do with her? She's in there. Son? Sir. What will happen to Marquette? I don't know. Inspector! What is it? Good God. Get an ambulance, quick. Sir. You can thank your lucky stars you did uncover that skeleton, Miss Wendell. Otherwise you would have buried her alive. She was alive. But only just. The doctors at the intensive care unit of Denton Hospital were non-committal as to her chances. But we were all keeping our fingers crossed. Back at the station, there were congratulations all round. And Frost's whiskey bottle was much in evidence. I seemed to have been given the evening off. So I took my policewoman out for a meal. And later, returned with her to my digs. And there was Frost waiting for us. <laughs> I'll show you when we get inside. <laughs> Hello, sir. Oh, damn. Hello, Hazel. Inspector. What do you want, sir? Well, I've been browsing through that Bennington's bank file, son, and I think I know who shot our skeleton. <sighs> I thought it might be nice to get it all tied up before Christmas. Or, uh, are you busy? Turn left at the top here. I appreciate this, sir. You must hate my guts. Sir. But since I'm on one of my rare winning streaks, I might as well play it for all it's worth. That's the house. Who lives here? Bloke called Powell. Been retired for years, but in 1951, he was Bennington's bank manager. Something of a heavy gambler, by all accounts. And he held one of the two keys that would open the money case. Now, if Powell did kill Forkus, he must be a bag of nerves now he knows we found the skeleton. Big house. Must have cost a packet. Who is it? Police! Go away! I'm Detective Inspector Frost, Denton CID. Mr. Powell, I'd like to question you about the murder of a Mr. Rupert Forkus on or about the 25th of August, 1951. I, I said, go away! Was that the gun you used? No. <laughs> Nip back to the car, son. Radio for help. Right, sir. Now, look, sir. This is silly. Put the gun down and we can talk. I just want to talk to you. I just reached the car when... <laughs> the man, appalled at what he had done, stared down in disbelief at Frost, a crumpled heap on the snow looking untidier than ever. Uh, Barnard! Hey? Oh, Mr. Mullet. Any news? Uh, they're operating now, but they're not holding out much hope. Mm. What a shocking business. Today of all days. Yes, sir. His wife died in this hospital, you know. 
devoted couple. Absolutely devoted. You hardly knew him, did you, Barnard? No, sir. I hardly knew him. Three days ago, I didn't even know he existed. Leslie Sands starred as Detective Inspector Frost, with Steve Hodson as Detective Constable Barnard, in Three Days of Frost by R.D. Wingfield. Superintendent Mullet was Jack May. Detective Inspector Cowell, Walter Hall. Sergeant Wells, Jonathan Scott. Detective Sergeant Hanlon, Cameron Miller. P.C. Stringer, John Gray. P.C. Jordan, Henry Davis. P.C. Sims, Geoffrey Collins. WPC, Valerie Murray. Joan Uphill, Shirley Dixon. Old Sam, Godfrey Kenton. Farnham, Leslie Heritage. Mrs. Harding, Anne Rosenfeld. Audrey Harding, Anne Winsack. Sandy Lane, Crawford Logan. Mickey Hoskins, Harold Rees. Martha Wendell, Kathleen Helm. And the driver, Michael Tudor Barnes. Three Days of Frost was produced and directed by Graham Gold.